Let's do it. In this video, we're going to weld a stainless socket weld fitting to a carbon steel pipe. ER309L is the filler metal we're going to be using, and that was really designed to weld carbon steel to stainless steel, but also makes for a really good maintenance rod. A maintenance rod is usually what we call a rod that's good for dissimilar metals, good for welding a steel when you know it's steel of some type, but you're not sure exactly what type of steel that is. In this case, it's a chrome vanadium wrench. Who knows exactly how much chrome and how much vanadium, but 309 will do the job. 309 has quite a bit more chromium and more nickel compared to 308 filler rod, and that kind of compensates for some amount of dilution when you're welding carbon steel to stainless steel. But that's also beneficial when you're welding some medium carbon steel. It allows the weld metal to absorb and keep that carbon in solution without the weld hardening. In the pipe welding world, it's very common to take a test using carbon steel coupons, carbon steel pipe to carbon steel pipe, but using an ER309 filler metal. Straps are then cut out of that and they're bend tested, usually, and they usually bend like a rubber band unless you do something wrong. So if that's the case, then you could say, well, 309L or 309 could also be used to weld carbon steel. That said, it's best practice just to use carbon steel filler metal for carbon steel. But then one Sunday afternoon, somebody drops you off a handful of these molds and you don't know what the metal type is. You know it's carbon steel. You don't know how many times it's been repaired or with what filler metal it's been repaired. And since these were molds for rubber, who knows how much of that stuff is impregnated in the little creases. Oftentimes when you grab an ER70 rod and light up on something that's impregnated with junk, it'll boil out, you'll get porosity, you'll have to grind all that porosity out. Whereas if you just grab a 309, good to go. And that is why I keep some 309 filler rod in the shop all the time. Back to the socket weld. We need a gap. So I'm putting a mark on there to make sure I have a gap when I tack it. Going hot. Usually you would have this chucked up in a tripod vise. I've got it chucked up in a positioner because that's how I'm going to weld it. I'm just doing this weld today to show a few techniques and talk about 309 filler rod. So I'm not going to use this for anything, but I still want to get it as straight as possible. Here's a down and dirty tip for when you're not exactly sure what speed to set your positioner at. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4. An eighth of an inch per second wound up being 2.1 RPM, and if I was smart, I'd write this in a handbook. <laughs> a lot of times I'll go to the trouble of setting up a prop, but for a one-off like this, a TIG finger will do the job. The main thing is to have a way where you can be steady, you can hold a tight arc, and you want to be comfortable. So if you have to, if you have a hundred of these things to do, you're not wore out at the end of the day. The TIG finger is really helping. I think you can imagine if I just had a bare glove right here, my fingers would be smoking already. But they're not. They're they're very comfortable. I'm not feeling any heat. It's allowing me to concentrate on the weld instead of how how my fingers feel. I'm just about to make it all the way to one revolution here, tying in to where I started. Then I'm going to taper off the amperage and quit feeding rod. And that's the first pass. Now, most codes require at least two passes on any socket weld. And this one would need another one. But we're going to go ahead and jump to another, whole another joint, so we can walk the cup. While I love the clear cups for filming, because it helps me see better and helps us all see better when I film the arc, I'm going to go ahead and swap over to a pink ceramic cup here. I'm going to pop that O-ring off and just thread that on. And now we're ready to go with some walk in the cup. For small diameter pipe, I'll grip it up fairly close to the head of the torch. That just gives you a little bit more control on larger diameter stuff. I definitely would grip it back further. What I'm trying to do here is to dip that rod in and out and make sure I get complete fusion down into the root. There are a lot of reports out there of socket weld failures. Some of it's due to not having a gap on the fit up. Some of it's due to not having complete fusion into the root of the joint. I'm trying to get complete fusion on these. 125 amps seems about right here. Seems to be flowing down into the root of the joint. No problem. On a turntable positioner weld like this, 
I like to either walk the cup if I can, and it makes sense to do it here, or I like to have a nice prop. I've done some videos before where I've set up different props where I can have a nice steady hand. It makes it a lot of fun. Okay, well that is the first pass of two. Piping codes like B31.1 or B31.3 all call for at least two passes. They're very much frowned on a single pass socket weld. So we're going to do at least two passes. And depending on what size fitting you have and the schedule pipe you're using and all that, you might need more than two passes. This is some gravy work doing a socket weld in a, in a positioner like this. And normally you'd have to get under it and weld from bottom to top. But I'm not doing that today. My back hurts. I used to have to do a lot of these, but that's been 35, 40 years ago. And haven't really had to do them since. I kind of feel my hand getting back in it. Like anything, if you get out of practice, it takes you a few to, to get back in. But if you did a lot of them way back in the day, it comes back pretty quick. I got lots of room for improvement here. I've seen lots of guys on the internet doing way better. But this is what I could do today, and I'm moving on to the next video.